I finished the build phase and I was set to paint my Okinawa base Corsair. I wanted to replicate those small scratches on the finish that were common in these late war fighters. Oh, I had some great ideas as to how I was going to do this. Remember what I'm always saying about taking risks and trying new things? Well, yeah, this happened. Yikes. So I can't shelf this model because it's my entry for a model show in three weeks. Think I can fix it? Let's find out. When I build, I can get bored repeating the same thing, so I try to incorporate something new every time. Sometimes this works, sometimes it does not. But I want to emphasize this, even a colossal failure isn't the end of the world. Like most things in life, these things can be fixed. Normally, stripping the model means a big old dunk in some sort of solution, but I wanted to preserve the cockpit and engine. Instead, I wet sanded it with a couple grades of paper. This ensured the surface would have no strange steps from the previous paint job, and I ended up with a neat looking worn Corsair that was very smooth to the touch. So here's what I'm going for. An Okinawa based Corsair, late 44. I pretty much want to do this one, but this picture doesn't give us a lot to work with, so we're gonna to have to extrapolate a little. To get an idea of how I want to finish this thing, here are some pictures of similar planes at this point in the war, and you'll notice a few things. These planes are relatively clean and pristine, at least compared to those patched up, chipped, and sun-bleached birds that were prevalent in the Solomons. Now, I have a few theories as to why this could be. The first is, these planes in Okinawa were relatively new, and by this time in the war there was one incredible logistics train to keep these machines in tip-top condition. Then again, Glossy blue paint is incredibly durable stuff. I mean, seriously, you'd almost have to take a hammer to it to get it to chip. And the last thing is, and I have this on some authority, that armed forces photographers are directed to the nicest planes for official pictures. And who knows? It could be a combination of all of these things. But take a look. You can see there are some stains, maybe a little chipping, but the finish is mostly scratched and scuffed. The previous experiment in paint scratching may have been a failure and I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board. But this time, I'm chipping with liquid mask and some pencil scratches. I'm using a toothpick to make the smallest dots and scratches possible in the usual wear areas. Typically, these are where the wing tops are, are closest to the fuselage and then over in the areas around the hatches to access the machine guns and ammo boxes. These are being made as teeny as possible. The wing fronts and cowl are also scratched and chipped on these land-based Corsairs. And to replicate this, I'm using a torn sponge and I'm lightly applying the liquid mask as randomly as possible. Now, every now and then I get a little ambitious with the sponge, but this is not a problem. A little bit of cleanup takes the big blobs down to smaller, more realistic looking blobs. For painting the main color, I'm using Mr. Color Lacquer Glossy Blue Paint which sprays beautifully and gives a very tough, glossy finish to work with. And note the lack of masking. These late war Corsairs are incredibly easy to paint. Gear doors, gear bays, canopies, everything. It's all blue. Everything is blue. It's wonderful. In removing the masking, I get my paint chips. I think most of these chips look okay, but compared to the photographs, some might look a bit too big and too round. Fixing this is easy with a fine brush and some more glossy blue paint. I just add some blue here and then the chips just look more realistic and scratch like. Now I used a few decal sheets to make Bob Klingman's Corsair and I thought I nailed the two-piece cow checkers decals, but that is when I looked at the plane from the side. Now that crooked thing is a real shame and leaving it will bother me so i'm gonna fix it normally i take out some sticky tape and i'd attempt to rip off the offending check but 
I was worried I might rip off a whole lot more than just one. So I'm using those post-it tabs to make a very weak mask. And that makes it very easy to erase with paint. And then a single check or checker is applied correctly this time. Ah, there we go. Pretty as a picture. Next up is the landing gear. These were painted aluminum at the factory, and so they're very easy to replicate on a model. I used Tamiya Aircraft Aluminum as a base coat. Then I used black panel line wash to bring out the detail. And same goes with the wheel hubs. Um, and that's, that's the easy parts done. Oh, and then I painted the brake lines with Vallejo Black. Normally, I paint my tires NATO black and call it a day, but I wanted to up my tire game with this build. So, after masking the hubs and painting the tire regular black, I'm painting the block treads individually with Vallejo gray paint. I'm thinking this will make the tread stand out a little bit more, but at this point, it's really stark. So, it needs to be blended with a thin coat of NATO black. Okay, that looks a lot more promising after this step. And finally, I jam some Pacific dust pigment into the treads and get them nice and dusty. I'm being careful to go light on the dust just to get things dusty, but not absolutely covered in pigment and looking strange. I think this looks just about right for a dusty runway or taxiway, but I'm rethinking painting the block treads as I really can't see them now. I might as well stay on the underside of the Corsair and do the exhausts. I'm using the Ultracraft resin set because they definitely are improvement on the kit part. Um, I, paint, I paint these in aluminum and then I get a thin coat of black and then red brown on them. And finally, a little bit more panel line wash finishes the job. Now for the exhaust staining, I went with this photograph on the underside of a Corsair in the Pacific. There is a little bit of staining but not two long, huge lines of powdery soot. The stain also seems to stop at that belly vent. So to replicate, I masked off the fuselage after the vent, and then I use thin mixes of paint to gently place these exhaust lines. I start with a thin gray, and then I go back with an even thinner dark brown. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is accurate because I was not able to find a clear photo of, um, of late war Corsair exhaust stains. The last bits of this build were to uh, make some ground splatter stains on the underside of the wings, and then I get to make even more pencil scratches. Again, I'm trying to be as restrained as possible, but still bring some character and color to the model. And finally, we get to the tape over the gun ports on the wings. Now, this was done by both the Marines and the Navy to keep moisture and dust uh, from getting down the barrels and jamming up the guns. And I tell you, this was a fun detail to add, despite the fact that I'm covering up that scratch built series of gun barrels that I installed. There seems to have been a variety of patterns used by ground crews to cover the gun ports, but I like this pattern because it looks a little sloppy. Now to replicate it, I thought of using actual tape, um, glue soaked tissue, maybe even foil, but each one of these things seemed overly thick. So I'm going with decals, uh, thick ones that are installed without any setting or other solutions. I don't want these things to sink into the gun parts. I just want them to ride over the top, just like tape. So I recycle old kit decals this way, and then I take my time putting them on. And there we go. A little sloppy, but I think these look just like the tape that was used. After that, I install the aerial, and this model is good to go. And guess what? I already have the base done. So there you have it. The Okinawa Corsair is finally painted and paired with its base. This was a fun project, and it was great to make some easy additions to an older kit and then try to paint it to match some period photos. I really hope you like watching this as much as I like building it. So, as always, keep building your kits, keep taking risks, 
because even when they don't work out the first time, you can still learn a little something or improve a skill. Thanks for watching, everyone.